In this video, I'm gonna be talking about project scope management. So I'll introduce you to some of the core concepts, but also define the term scope, and then just give you a broad understanding of these concepts that we're gonna be exploring in much more detail later on. Let's start with the most important definition. What actually is scope? Well, scope, it's everything you need to do to complete the project. It's all the work, it's all the deliverable. That's the easiest way to think about it. Everything you need to do to complete the project. Okay. So if scope is everything we need to do to complete the project, then what is scope management? Well, scope management is the process we follow to ensure the project includes all the work needed to complete the project and nothing extra. So it's really got two sides to it. It's making sure that everything we need to do, we do, but then we're also not doing unnecessary and extra work. So that's scope management is the process we use to manage project scope. Or even more simply, project scope is defining and controlling what is and is not included in the project. If we take, for example, a project to build a new bridge, defining scope is understanding and clearly articulating whether we're upgrading existing roads, whether we're doing lighting, how many lanes we're providing, whether we have to relocate underground services or install new underground services, who's responsible for engaging with stakeholders, and if there's contaminated soil, who's responsible for removing it. So you can think of a project as building a bridge, then there's all these questions that need to be answered. And the way we go about answering these questions is really scope management. So now if we map project scope management out across the life cycle of a project, and I know that PMBOK does this with their process groups and how they relate to each other, but I think this is just a more simple diagram so you can sort of get your head around what is scope management. So it starts off in the planning phase where we collect requirements, so we engage with our stakeholders, we work out exactly what we're gonna be delivering in the projects, we define the scope, and we create a work breakdown structure. So work breakdown structure is taking all the project scope, breaking it down in tiny pieces, and defining every exact component of it. We then move into project delivery, where we deliver the project scope, execute the project scope. Then we also need to monitor and control project scope. So this is how we check and validate that what we're doing is in project scope and that we've also correctly completed the project scope. So we said we're gonna do something, we've then gone ahead and done it, and then we've checked that what we've done matches our original project scope statement. So if you think about project scope at across the life cycle of a project, you have a planning phase, you have an executing phase, you have a monitoring phase, and then you have a closeout phase where you accept the deliverables. And it takes us through this process of first defining and understanding what is in project scope, checking that what we're doing matches what we said we were doing, and then finally validating that what we've delivered matches our original requirements. So that's how we manage project scope through the life cycle of a project. The first one is the term product scope. So we're gonna talk about the difference between product scope and project scope. So product scope is the features and functions that characterize a product service or result. So it's all about the product we're delivering. So for example, a bridge, product scope would be the number of lanes, the type of road servicing, the type of lighting, all these features that form part of the finished deliverable to the client. Product scope is therefore a subset of project scope. Now project scope is all the work we need to do to complete the project. So it's all the work we have to undertake to create the finished product. So it obviously includes the building of the finished product, delivering the bridge with the lighting, with the lanes, but it also includes other works. For example, we might have to set up temporary site facilities, we might have to relocate services. So we might have to do a whole lot of work that doesn't necessarily form part of the finished product, but is included in our project scope. If we quickly look at a comparison between what would be included in product scope and then in project scope, so product scope would be the street lighting, the asphalting, the line marking, while project scope would be all of the product scope, so all the work we need to do to complete the finished product. So remember, product scope is gonna be a subset of project scope. But we're also going to need to do temporary works. We're going to have to set up site facilities. We're going to need to organize a security guard to come back at night. All these other tasks that don't necessarily form part of the finished product, but are in the scope of our project. 
The next concept we need to understand is planning scope management. And now remember in section two, we're going to go through all of these items in much more detail, but planning scope management is creating a scope management plan that documents how scope will be defined, validated, and controlled. So all our management plans are the how of the project. We're not in the plan, in the scope management plan. We're not going to be defining project scope. We're just going to be talking about the process through which we're going to manage the project scope. The next concept is collecting requirements. So collecting requirements is the process of determining, collecting, documenting, and managing stakeholder needs and requirements. So there's all these people, there's all these organizations that are project influences that have certain needs that they want our project to fulfill. So we have to go through a formal process to understand what these needs are and then integrate them into our project scope. So collecting requirements is the first step in this process. Once we've collected all our requirements, we need to put all these together in the project scope statement. So the project scope statement is a detailed description of the project scope, including the deliverables and the work required. So the project scope statement is going to feature the product scope, the deliverables, but also the entire project scope. So it's also going to define the work we need to do to complete these deliverables. And this is the section where we clearly define exactly what we're going to be doing in the project. And scope statement is one of the most important project documents, and it's going to avoid a whole lot of problems down the line. If we clearly define our project scope and know exactly what we're going to be doing, it's going to prevent scope creep. It's going to prevent budget blowouts. It's going to prevent schedule delays. And that's because we clearly know and can articulate the work we're going to be doing in our project. We do this with the project scope statement. To help us define and understand scope, we're going to use a tool called a work breakdown structure. Now, work breakdown structure is a hierarchical decomposition of the project scope. For example, we take our bridge, we break it down into all the core components of the project. We might have to do design work. We will have earthworks, we'll have structures, we'll have roadworks, we'll have line marking, all these activities we define by breaking down this project scope into component pieces and in multiple layers. And we keep going further down this structure until we have a full work breakdown structure dictionary. But don't worry, we're going to go through some examples of this later on. Once we've created our project scope statement, we've created our work breakdown structure and our full work breakdown structure dictionary, then we can bundle this together and this becomes our scope baseline. This is the clearly defined and detailed works that we're going to be doing to complete our project. And we refer to this as the scope baseline. All of that happens in the planning phase of the project. And after we've defined scope, created our scope baseline, we can move into project execution. So during project execution, while we deliver the project scope, we also need to validate the project scope. So scope validation is the process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables which is just a fancy way of saying it's checking what we've done matches our original requirements. We also need to control project scope. So controlling project scope is all about ensuring that we're not doing extra work above and beyond what we said we were going to do. So validating project scope is about checking the deliverables have been correctly completed. Controlling project scope is about monitoring the status of the project and product scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. So while we go through project delivery, we'll get requested to do additional work or we might get requested to remove scope from the project. So scope control is all about the change management process we need to follow to ensure our project scope is maintained. Now remember, we're going to go through all of these concepts in a lot more detail, but what did we cover? the core concepts of project scope management. We spoke about product scope versus project scope. We spoke about the process of planning scope management, collecting requirements, developing a scope statement, the work breakdown structure, which forms our scope baseline, and during project execution, how we validate project scope, and then how we control it to make sure we're not doing a whole lot of unnecessary work. Okay, so now at a high level, we understand what scope is and what scope management is. Now I'm gonna go into some more detail around the core concepts that project scope management is built around.